Okay, so we are still in differential equations and we are now looking at linear independence and the run scheme. Okay. Okay, so it will be important for us to be able to decide on the linear independence of a set of functions. Given a set f, containing functions f1 of x, f2 of x, and all the way to fn of x, to decide on linear independence or dependence of that set, right? So to, de to sort of decide whether any one of these functions is a linear combination of the other functions in the set, we must solve, of course, the linear com setting the linear combination of those functions equal to zero. So alpha 1 times f1 plus alpha 2 times f2 plus da 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 all the way to alpha n times fn equals zero. We must solve that, okay, for alpha 1, alpha 2, and alpha n. If the only solution is alpha 1 equals alpha 2 equals da 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 alpha n, if the only solution is all the alphas, all the alpha i's are equal to zero, then the set is linearly independent, right? Okay, that's exactly the same as for the linear independence of vectors because these functions are actually can be thought of as vectors in the vector space of functions from reals to reals. Okay. We will always speak about linear independence on a particular interval i. Okay, so we're actually not going to be talking about functions from reals to reals, actually. We're going to be talking about functions, really, from this interval i to reals. So not, so this, that, R, R to the R, that's the set of all functions from the reals to the reals. Whereas this R to the I is the set of all functions from I to the reals, okay? Where I is something like maybe the interval, open interval from A to B, those two real, where those are two real numbers. So the equation 3.1, that must be this one, yes, the equation 3.1, the, the linear combination of all the functions equals zero, must be satisfied for all values of x in the interval. Of course, right, this equation, it's a linear combination of functions, okay, then you evaluate the whole left-hand side at x, and also you evaluate the right-hand side at x. The right-hand side is, of course, zero for every value of x, and the left-hand side, to evaluate it at x, you actually evaluate, because of the definition of addition of functions and scalar multiplication of functions, you evaluate each individual function at x and then take the linear combination of the actual numbers. Okay, that's straightforward. So we're gonna, we're gonna check, we're gonna do an example now. Is the set f, which has three functions in it, x squared plus x, 4x and two, linearly independent on r? Okay, so when they say on R, now the interval in question then is actually R, the whole real line. So in this case, the interval is from minus infinity to infinity, which of course just equals R. So in this case, our functions from I to R is the same as functions from real to reals. Okay. But we, the point is that we could later choose a smaller interval. Okay. But in this example, the interval we're choosing is the biggest possible interval. It's the whole real line and the functions are the Reals to reals, like we've looked at before. Okay, so to see if this set is linearly independent on R, we should check what coefficients satisfy alpha times x squared plus x plus beta times 4x plus gamma times 2 equals 0. Okay, so you times each of the functions by a scalar, alpha, beta, and gamma, add them all together, set it equal to 0, right, that's the normal procedure. Now, these coefficients must work for all values of x, right, okay, these are function, this equation is true for all values of x because it's an equation about these functions, okay. In particular, so, this, so the same coefficient, one coefficient, each, so the alpha coefficient, it must work, you know, the alpha, beta, and gamma coefficients, those three coefficients, the same three coefficients, they must work for the functions, right, as a whole, so therefore they must work, the same coefficients must work for every value of x. Okay, so they should, in particular then, these coefficients should work for when x equals zero. So that, gives, that makes that zero, it makes that zero, and so you immediately get gamma times two equals zero, which means that gamma must equal zero. But this uh, coefficient, so the same coefficients, so we know that gamma is zero. Not just when x is zero, we know that gamma is, all, is zero for all values because gamma must be the same thing for every value of x because gamma depends on the function, not on the, not on the function at a particular value. 
Now, um, the, the coefficient should also work when x equals minus 1. Uh, you do x equals minus 1, you get x squared plus x becomes 1 minus 1, which is 0, so that goes away. We don't want you to know that that's gone away because gamma is 0. So now you have beta times minus 4 must equal 0, so that means that beta must equal 0. Okay. So now we just have alpha times the equation remaining is the alpha times x squared plus x must equal 0. And if you consider, say, any other value of x, for example, x equals 1, you'll get alpha times 2 must equal 0. So that means that alpha equals 0. So all the coefficients are 0. Right? Write down this, we wrote this linear combination, set it equal to the function 0. And, we and by subbing different values, we found that the coefficients all have to be 0. The only coefficients that make this thing, equation true, for all values of x are 0, 0, 0. So that means that the set is linearly independent. Okay. Now let's do one, just one more example. Okay. Is the set G, which consists of, again, three functions, cos squared x, sine squared x, and cos 2x, linearly independent on now the interval from 0 to 2 pi, the closed interval from 0 to 2 pi. So, of course, that's the interval. It's all those all those real numbers that are less than or equal to 0, sorry, greater than or equal to 0 and less than or equal to 2 pi, okay? And so now we're considering the vector space we're in now is r to the 0 to 2 pi, that r to that interval, okay? And, okay, of course, you know, cos squared, all these functions, they can be defined on different intervals, they can be defined on the interval from the reals to the reals, but that's not what we're considering here. We're just considering this restricted interval from 0 to 2 pi. Okay. Recall that cos 2x equals cos squared x minus sine squared x. Okay, this is a trig identity, right? You know, it comes from cos of x plus x equals cos x times cos x. Cos of x plus y equals cos x times cos y minus sine x times sine y. And then now you have y being x, you're going to get cos of x plus x equals cos x times cos x minus sine x times sine x, so that's just saying cos 2x equals cos squared x minus sine squared x. Okay. So substitution in equation 3.1, that's this uh, linear combination thing, linear combination of functions, gives you... Uh, let's do this substitution. So we're going to... We, we, to check the linear independence of these three functions, we're going to be looking at alpha times cos squared x plus beta times sine squared x plus gamma times cos 2x, and we're going to set that equal to 0. But now we know that cos 2x, we know that cos 2x actually equals cos squared x minus sine squared x. So in fact, let's ignore what they've done and see, and, and I mean, we can easily inspect and find a solution here, right? Because if cos 2x If cos 2x, if cos 2x is cos squared x minus sine squared x, clearly we could solve this equation with some non-zero values. For example, this equation would be satisfied by if we chose alpha equal to 1. No, let's, actually let's choose, no, let's choose alpha equal to minus 1, beta equals to 1, and gamma equals to 1, right? Because then we're going to get minus cos squared x plus cos squared x and sine squared x minus sine squared x, which is, so, yeah, it comes to 0. And note that I've, I've put this arrow facing backwards because I'm not saying that these things have to be true when this is true. I'm not saying that this implies that. Rather, I'm saying, I'm saying that this is true when this is true, right? So that's why the arrow is backwards. I'm saying that this is one particular way of getting that to be true. Okay. Um, and in fact, there are only an infinite number of non-trivial solutions. I mean, for example, you could multiply these by any scalar. In fact, that's what they've done. They multiplied. If you multiply our values that we got by two, you get minus two, uh, two and two. Okay. There are other, yeah, okay. 
So that means, what does that mean then? That means that that set is not linearly independent because there are non-trivial solutions to this linear combination. So the set is not, so this set is not linearly independent. Okay.